Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today for Mediation Preparation for Attorneys, or as I call it, the ABCs to your client's best mediation. Thought I'd start out by addressing one question you all may have, and that is, who is Joe Colbert Stanley? Well, that's me. I'm a Florida Supreme Court certified circuit civil and county mediator and qualified arbitrator. I'm also a public arbitrator with FINRA. If you do any SEC work, you know what that's all about. And I hold an LLM in Alternative Dispute Resolution and Litigation. I am currently working on my PhD in Conflict Resolution Studies. But perhaps even more relevant here, I've been practicing law for over 20 years. And sure, you can go ahead and do the math, I don't mind. But I've primarily focused on employment law, insurance litigation, and other civil litigation. I say that's relevant today because as an attorney turned mediator, I've seen both, well, all sides of the proverbial mediation table. And so my perspective is pretty well rounded and based on way more experience than I care to admit, but hopefully um, it'll be helpful to you all. So give it a listen and hopefully I'll be able to impart some of the wisdom I've gleaned over all these years. That includes some hints and tips on best practices in terms of the mechanics of mediation prep, and we'll also get into some of the nitty-gritty, intangible stuff attorneys should take into consideration, such as managing client expectations and energy and even your own psyche. So, for simplicity's sake, I call this the ABCs. Just as a quick way to remember or give yourself a checklist as you're preparing for the upcoming mediation. A is for arrangements that you've made, the administrative aspects, if you will, of setting up the mediation. B being for briefing. Have you briefed your client? Have you briefed yourself? Have you explained the process and the procedure? And C, have you counseled your client? and yourself. This is the more intangible stuff I spoke about, where we'll talk about scary things like feelings and energy. So let's dig in. Arranging. Let's talk about that. During the arranging phase, this is where you'll prepare for the mediation, taking care of the administrative aspects. This requires proper and thorough preparation in advance, so you can really focus on your client on the day of the mediation. And I'll repeat that, so you can focus on your client. It's their day, after all. During the arranging phase, you'll want to be focusing on things like documents, presentations, schedule, and even technology and logistics. So when we're talking about documents, consider this your record in advance of trial, And remember, there are no rules of evidence, so gather everything you think is pertinent to the case. Also, while we live in a digital age of ESI, or um, electronically stored information, don't underestimate the impact a piece of paper still brings to the proverbial table. Not to mention how low-tech avoids high-tech problems, right? And if you're anything like me, sometimes it's just easier to flip through a binder than to scroll through a laptop or phone. Business records such as bank statements, personnel files were applicable. But if you want to pull out a performance review, warranty information, user manuals, receipts, these are all the documents you need to start pulling and arranging and putting together. The point is, mediation is not the place to hide the ball or think you'll save the smoking gun until trial. Rather, mediation is the place to resolve your client's dispute in the most civilized, calm environment before heading into that arena. This includes contracts, when we're talking about documents, written agreements between the parties, obviously, but also think about correspondence, texts, emails. Anything that corroborates your client's version of events, remember, no rules of evidence. You have more leeway during a mediation than you will when you get to court. So do you need to look at social media posts? Do you need to print those out? Just think about all the things that help present your client's point of view. So 
Also, I want you to gather pleadings and motions that you've already filed in the case, exhibits to those filings, and maybe draft motions you're considering filing in the event this matter goes forward beyond the mediation. For instance, it might behoove you to even have your motion for summary judgment already prepared or any other dispositive type motion. You should be as ready as you need to be for trial because in theory, your next step is trial. It would be unfortunate if you saved your best argument for your opening statement in front of a judge and jury, wasting your client's time and money and perhaps more importantly, psychic energy. You know, your client or adversary may say, well, why didn't you bring that up at the mediation? And really, you don't want that to happen.